prostate cancer is on the rise, but so is our ability to detect and prevent it smarter and earlier. A new study published in the New England Journal of Medicine suggests. In 2020 alone, prostate cancer caused 275,000 deaths worldwide, making it the second most common cancer in men after skin cancer. Despite this burden, there is still no internationally accepted population-wide screening program, largely because current tools like PSA testing bring high rates of po false positive overdiagnosis and overtreatment. Yet, the need is urgent. Diagnose early, uh, five-year survival uh, for prostate cancer is nearly 100%. Diagnose late, survival drops to 50%. The Barcode 1 study just published in the New England Journal of Medicine points to a smarter path forward. In this study, by targeting screening to men aged 55 to 69, with a polygenic risk score in the top 10%, the study found that 40% of these men had prostate cancer on biopsy. 55% of those had clinically significant cancer, a Gleason score equal or higher than 7, requiring treatment. 21.4% had unfavorable intermediate to high risk disease and over 70% of these cases would have been missed under current UK diagnostic pathways. And finally, 97.6% of insignificant cancers were avoided reducing overtreatment. We know that older age and family history of prostate cancer are established risk factors for prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is highly heritable with up to 58% heritability observed in studies involving identical twins. A small proportion of germline genetic risk is caused by rare pathogenic variants in DNA repair genes like the, the BRCA1 and BRCA2, but a greater proportion is due to the combined effect of multiple low-risk variants called single nucleotide polymorphism SNPs such as ATM, check to mismatch repair pathway genes and other genes from which a person's polygenic risk score can be calculated. But remember, genetic, genetics is only part of the story. Many of the drivers of prostate cancer are modifiable risk lifestyle factors. Visceral obesity and metabolic dysfunction, which raises risk and full aggressive forms like low-grade chronic inflammation and hormonal imbalances like higher circulating IGF-1, insulin and free testosterone, often tied to excessive caloric intake, insulin resistance and a sedentary lifestyle uh, uh, are important. Poor diet, high in processed, particularly processed, but also red meats, dairy and refined carbs, and low intake of protected foods like uh, cruciferous ve vegetables, you know, cabbage and broccoli, uh, tomatoes, omega-3 fe uh, from fatty fish, and physical inactivity, smoking and alcohol consumption are all linked to uh, an increased risk of prostate cancer. As we said, prostate cancer is highly heritable, but what we eat, do, and avoid can profoundly shape how the risk plays out in terms of developing an aggressive lethal metastatic prostate cancer. As noted 
in the DOM paper, the incidence of histological prostate cancer raises similarly with age in both Japanese and American men. However, clinical prostate cancer is significantly more prevalent among American men or, as we can see here, in people in Singapore that in the past had very low risk of prostate cancer, clinical prostate cancer like Japanese. And as you can see with the westernization of lifestyle in Singapore, the prostate cancer incidence and prevalence has increased dramatically. This discrepancy lends support to the fertile soil hypothesis which proposes that environmental exposures or lifestyle factors associated with the westernizations of lifestyle, particularly unhealthy dietary and behavioral patterns, may promote the progression of latent prostate cancer into clinical detectable and <laughs> daily disease because what is killed man is not a local dormant small histological prostate cancer but is an aggressive growing metastatic prostate cancer. Therefore, just to summarize, a polygenic risk score calculated once in a lifetime enables personalized risk-based screening, more effective, less harmful and potentially life-saving. It is time to rethink cancer prevention by integrating genomic data with lifestyle medicine from early screening to targeted intervention. As always, this is uh, Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL. Uh, uh, I'm uh, Luigi Fontana, professor of medicine, the, uh, the Leonard P. Ullman Chair in Translation and Metabolic Health. Uh, uh, and the scientific director of the CPCRPA clinic at the University of Sydney. Thank you for listening.